This is the Unit 11 review for geometry. This is the remote learning version of the test slash review. So the first three questions have to do with the triangle. Um, number one, find the area of the triangle. So I would also, if you could, have your formula sheet handy. Um, you could have printed it out or just have it up on the screen so it's easy for you to check the formulas. So for our formula for a triangle, we have one half base times height. So here is your base, here is your height. So I would do one half times twelve times ten. Twelve times ten is one hundred and twenty. And if I take a half of one hundred and twenty, we get sixty feet squared. Now on the test, it's usually multiple choice or multiple response. So you would just make sure that you would select um, with the feet squared. Number two, we need to find the area and the perimeter of the triangle. So perimeter should be pretty simple. We're going to add up all the sides. So uh, 15 and 5 would be 20 plus 13 plus 19.2. And if we add all those together, we would get 52.2 inches. Okay, for the area, we would do, this is your height, and your base would be 20. So 1 half times 20 times 12. So 20 times 12 is 240. And then half of that would be 120 inches squared. Now, on this type of a problem, I would have multiple response. So you would select all the answers. So you would look for A equals the correct answer, P equals the correct answer. Number three, this is a new one. So we did this in day one notes, but it was the one that had that sign feature. And I told you guys to use the Google cal um, calculator and make sure it's in degrees. So I'm going to write that here. You want to make sure it's in the degree mode. So you would do area is one half times B times C, so these two sides right here, 8 times 7, times sine of the angle. And so if it was me working this out, I would go ahead and multiply the 8 times 7, and then divide that by 2, and that would be 28, times sine of 115, again, just so you know, you got to make sure you have it in degrees before you do 28 times sine 115. And that would give you 25.37, hold on one second, let's see, sine, point six. Okay, so since it says round to the nearest hundredth, that six would make the, that six go up to seven. So 25.377 meters squared. Okay, number four, we have uh, simply base times height. So eight times three, that's 24 in, er, yards squared. And number five, another parallelogram. So again, base times height. So nine times five. So 45 inches squared. For number six, it says find the area of the composite figure. So we need to find the area of the rectangle and the triangle. So first, um, the base of the triangle would be eight. This is extra. This is extra. So for the triangle, so I'm going to do a little triangle here. So the area of the triangle, we would do 1 half base 8 times the height 5. So that would be 40. Take half of that, we get the triangle is 20. Okay. The rectangle would be length times width, so 8 times 5, and that gives us 40. 
So the area of the composite figure would be 40 plus 20, and that would be 60 meters squared. Okay, for number seven, we have a trapezoid. So that would be one half times your height. The height would be the distance between the two bases. This is base one, this is base two. So the height is three times the sum of the bases, so 7 plus 11. So 3 times 18 gives me 54. And then half of 54 is 27. In number 8 and number 9, we have a kite and then we have a rhombus. So for both of these, we're using the formula 1 half diagonal 1 diagonal 2. So area equals 1 half diagonal 1, so 3.5 plus 6.5 is 10. Diagonal 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. So 10 times 4 is 40. Half of 40 is 20, and that would be meters squared. Then down here for number 9, um, we're going to do the same formula. So 1 half times diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. So diagonal 1, we've got 5 plus 5 is 10. Diagonal 2, 4 plus 4 is 8. So here, 10 times 8 would be 80. We take a half, and that would be 40 inches squared. Okay, moving right along. So for number 10 and 11, we're dealing with regular um, polygons. So if you remember, we had this formula right here for a regular polygon is 1 half times the apothem times the perimeter of the shape given. So in this case, number 10, this 8 is our apothem. Um, the, the word hexagon gives us a nice clue. We know the number of sides is 6. So to suffice our formula here, we would say that the apothem is 8. The perimeter is 6 sides, so 6 times the side length of 10. This is your S for side length. So I would multiply all of these together, 8, 6, 10, and that would give me 480. And if I take a half of that, we get 240. And that would be, of course, squared. Okay, then in number 11, same formula. Okay, but we're given that this is a pentagon, so the number of sides now is 5. And we would have 1 half times the apothem of 13. We have 5 sides for our perimeter, 5 times the side length of 15. Again, if we multiply these together, 13, 5, and 15, we get 975. Taking half of that, we get 487.5 centimeters squared. Okay, for number 12, we are finding the circumference and the area of both of these circles. It says we have to use 3.14 for pi, and it doesn't have any rounding rules here, so we're just going to leave our answers as is. So first, we know that our radius is 7. For circumference, we're dealing with 2 pi r. So 2 pi 7. So I'm going to do 2 times 7 is 14, times 3.14 for pi, and we get 43.96 kilometers. For our area, pi r squared, 
we would have pi times 7 squared, so 49 times 3.14, we get 153.86 kilometers squared. Okay, the only thing really different about 13 is that in this case I'm giving you the diameter instead of the radius, so you do have to make sure you identify the radius as 3. You can use diameter still if you want for like the circumference formula if you need it, but I would just get rid of it and know that I'm dealing with that r is 3. So circumference, I've got 2 pi times 3, so 6 pi, 6 times 3.14, and then for the area, pi times 3 squared, so 9 times 3.14, 28.26. Okay. Now, more for the newer stuff of the of this unit. Number 14, it says find the arc length of a circle. So, we're finding arc AB. So, what that means is that you're finding in centimeters, what would this measure? So, if I had a piece of string from A to B, Okay, on the curve, I took the piece of string and I laid it straight out, what would it measure on a ruler? Okay, so how I do that, I say that the arc length is the angle measure over 360 times 2 pi r. So if you're looking at the formula sheet, you're looking for the arc length one. Okay, that gives you this measurement here that's in bold. So 2 pi r, where r is 3. Again, it says we're using 3.14 for pi, and we are rounding the nearest hundredth. So for me, you can do this many ways. So I'm just going to take 50 times 2 times 3. And this gives me 300 over 360 times pi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 300 divided by 360 gives me this decimal times 3.14. It gives me 2.61666 repeating. Round to the nearest hundredth. So that means I'm going to round up to 2.617 and this is centimeters squared. Okay, for number 15, same thing, we're finding the arc length of EF, so the angle measurement out of 360 or over 360 times 2 pi times 16, so 135 times 2 times 16. I get 4,320 divided by 360 times that 3.14. So this time I get 37.68, so it actually doesn't go to the hundredths place, which is fine. I'm just going to leave it like that. Inches squared, or no, not squared. This is arc length. So let's fix that over here too. Okay, now for area of the shaded sector, so you're finding just a piece of the circle, we're going to do the angle measure again. So the arc measure is the same as the central angle measure. We learned that before spring break. So 60 divided by the 360. Uh, since we're in area of a sector, you're using this formula. So times pi r squared. So what I would do is I would do 60 times the 64. Honestly, it's a lot of calculator work, so I'm just showing you my steps here and like how I'm getting these numbers. So 60 times 64 gives me this. We can take that, divide it by 360, and then times by 3.14. We get 33.49333 repeating. Rounding to the nearest hundredth, the 3 would just stay 3. 
Okay, so in number 17, we see that we have 23 degrees as our central angle. And that would be out of 360 times pi r squared, so 5 squared. So I'm doing that 23 times the 25. That gives me 575. So you could take that times 3.14, then divide by 360. You can take 575 divided by 360 times 3.14. Either way is fine. Okay, so here the 2 makes it stay the same, so we'd have 5.015 feet squared. Okay, near the end we have number 18. For each pair, or so for this one, for the pair of similar figures, find the scale factor, perimeter ratio, and area ratio for the smallest to biggest shape. So first, my scale factor would be 5 to 10 but we know that reduces to one half. Now, just because we're using a computer program for most of this, I tried not to do fractions if I could get away with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that like this. Sometimes you will see fractions, okay? Um, in these notes, you were told the scale factor and the perimeter ratio are the exact same thing. So the perimeter ratio is also one to two. Okay. But your area ratio is when you take your scale factor and you square it. So 1 squared is 1 and 2 squared is 4. So there are your three ratios. I believe, again, this would be multiple response, so you would select three answers here for three points. Okay, and we have two more questions. So for these two, the figures given are similar. The area of the larger pentagon is 135 centimeters squared. So this right here, the fact that it's area of the larger pentagon at 135, that's very important. Okay, so I'm, I know that the area is 135. Find the area of the other figure to the nearest whole number. So one, I need to get a scale factor. So I'm gonna take the eight and the 24 and I'm gonna go ahead and find my scale factor. So I'm gonna say SF. So I'm gonna say eight 24 reduces to one third. That's my scale factor. Since I am given the area of the bigger figure, I need to find the area of this one. So I need to change the scale factor to area ratio. So now, I say one squared and three squared. And since now I'm in area, I don't know the small area. I know the big area is 135. So before I cross multiply, I need to calculate one squared and three squared. So then I've got nine X equals 135. And if I take 135 divided by 9, we get a whole number of 15. So in this case, I don't have to round. So the small figure is 15 centimeters squared. For number 20, last one. The parallelograms are similar. Find the scale factor, perimeter ratio, and area ratio from the small to large parallelogram. Okay, so this right here is important, small to large. So I'm looking at 20 over 245. This is area, but I know that these are not perfect squares. So you must reduce. So let's see, five can go into both of these. So let's try five. Okay, so I divided both by five, I get 49 and I know that that is a perfect square. So or those are perfect squares. So before I do that, that right there is the area ratio. To get to perimeter and scale factor, I'm square rooting both of these. 
So if I square root that, I get 2. If I square root 49, I get 7. So 2 sevenths are the scale factor and the perimeter ratio. And that's it.